Coming up on this week's news, smart meters are starting to make major mistakes. We reveal the hidden reason why. A probe is launched into allegations that apprentice electricians bought exam papers for £45, and the government unveils the controversial choice for its sole certifier of heat pump installs. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with SunGrow, making every watt count, literally, since 1997. Whether you're listening in the van, on site, or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joe Robinson, and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. We're being lit by Flex 7 with their lightning fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp and if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenged to slip into this week's show comment with them below for the chance to win a prize and while you're there click the links in the show notes to check out what our sponsors offer. If you have a customer whose electricity bills have changed dramatically recently, don't blame their energy use. It could be that their smart meter is going rogue. That's because many of the devices are starting to make major mistakes. Umair Ijaz of tech firm Tuxira says that inaccurate or incomplete data is becoming a growing challenge in the sector, and it's all thanks to a tiny component called a NAND flash memory. He says that at the heart of every smart meter is this memory chip which stores the meter readings, but the unit has a fatal flaw. Each time new data is written into it, it wears down the flash memory, gradually degrading its ability to store data accurately over time. Not only that, writing new data generates obsolete information that must later be cleared. This process is called garbage collection. Garbage collection places extra stress on the flash memory. It accelerates the memory wear, which can lead to inaccurate billing. Power loss and voltage changes also make things worse. If a smart meter loses power while it's writing into the data log, it could fail to reboot and completely stop working. This turns into what engineers call a brick. It needs a technician to either reset it or, failing that, replace it. This can cost hundreds of pounds. If, however, it continues to function, data corruption may occur, which will result in incorrect bills. Ijaz says that to fix the problem, he recommends more advanced file systems which can handle interruptions and don't wear out over use. He says that considering the problems with smart meters, this approach should be non-negotiable. In other news, an investigation has been launched into allegations that apprentice electricians in Ireland had an absolute jamboree when they bought exam papers for £45 the night before the test. The claims that cheating may have compromised the apprenticeship programme are being taken very seriously, say the Irish state authorities. There are also fears for the public that potentially unqualified electricians will be at large. The so-called compromised exam papers have now been withdrawn and replaced. Minister for Higher Education James Lawless has asked the country's Attorney General to consider if there is a criminal case to answer. He said you wouldn't want a surgeon operating on you that wasn't properly trained and you wouldn't want an electrician wiring your house that wasn't properly trained either. Still on safety and standards, the UK government is set to appoint MCS as the sole certification body for heat pump installs. It will certify installations under the Boiler Upgrade Scheme, the Energy Company Obligation, the Warm Homes Social Housing Fund and the Warm Homes Local Grant Scheme. The MCS, or Micro Generation Certification Body, is well known to the trade as the watchdog for solar projects. The move to award heat pumps to the organisation as well comes despite respondents to a recent government's consultation raising concerns that it would give MCS an effective monopoly. Some contractors fear that MCS certification would be costly and burdensome to installers, particularly small businesses. A number say that the organisation does not always ensure high-quality installations and protect consumers. Some respondents, however, back a single certification scheme. They say it would provide simplicity for consumers who often struggle to know what to look for when choosing a tradesperson. One respondent notes that there was already a choice for installers under MCS as they could pick their preferred certification body. For its part, MCS says that it's been improving quality in the sector for almost two decades. In that time, there's been over 2 million MCS certified installations by 6,000 certified installers. It's also invested in growing its skilled and dedicated customer experience and technical assessment teams. Heat networks will not be covered by MCS, but by the Heat Network Technical Assurance Scheme or equivalent. A reminder that new laws governing test certificates kick into force this week. To prevent getting themselves into a stickier situation than weak old spilled marmalade, social landlords must now conduct electrical installation condition reports or EICRs with qualified and competent persons at least once every five years for all new tenancies. This brings the sector into line with private rented accommodation. Local authorities and housing associations in England must issue a copy of the cert to any new tenant before they occupy the property or to existing tenants within 28 days of an inspection. They must also complete any recommended remedial works identified as C1 and C2 or any recommended further investigations within 28 days. Along with the EICRs, there is mandatory pat testing on all electrical appliances that are provided by social landlords as part of a tenancy 
tenancy. The changes come into effect for existing tenancies in May next year. In Northern Ireland, the certs became mandatory for new tenancies last April and kick in for existing tenancies from the 1st of December. The new laws follow a consultation with the trade which showed strong support for mandatory inspections. Now, we'd like to introduce you to SunGrow. The clean power brand has been in the industry for 28 years and has an 80-strong team in the UK. It's well known for its residential and commercial and industrial PV inverters, battery storage systems and EV chargers. It's recently expanded its distribution network and is now partnering with HDM Solar, Waxman, Alternergy and Midsummer UK. The UK team offers installation and commission advice and support as well as free training and webinars for electricians. There's also an installer rewards programme, the SunGrow Power Club. Watch this space for more innovations from the brand. Speaking of innovations, are you yet using eFix favourite Flex 7? The brand is well known for its modular prefabricated control boxes. They're basically plug and play and can be wired up in a fraction of the time of a traditionally wired system. In terms of control kits, Flex 7 offers lots of switches and devices operating at protected extra low voltage. That means the install is safer as controls and associated cabling are reduced to just 5 or 12 volts. It also allows for multiple circuits or even multiple phases to be switched at these low voltages too. There's no need for extra contactors or the potential of 400 volts at devices the general public might be required to operate. Wall switches, for example. Kit includes daylight linking, dimming, integrated emergency test, corridor hold, a last man out switch, networking across circuits, phases, and plug-in switches. What we really like, though, is the super small PIR sensor head. It fits through a hole with a diameter of just 32 millimeters. They measure 40 mil in diameter at their widest, making them super discreet and unobtrusive. All versions of the brand's PIR sensor heads are available in both white and black. They have adjustable timeout and sensitivity settings, and the detection range can be increased by up to six-fold by adding extra heads. Sensor heads are available for occupancy and absence detection as well as with daylight linking. Flex 7 also offers surface mount temper resistant and IP67 versions. UK firm Rayco has unveiled its DIN range. It's a whole new way to install its acclaimed lighting control system. The range offers simple installation on a standard DIN rail. Rayco's DIN module has a cool clean design and 45 degree push terminals and LED readout for easy install and operation. The DIN range comprises four Models. There's a four channel version with 4K dimming for mains dimmed loads. There's an eight channel version for switching for lights, fans, motors, and other non dimmed loads. A four channel curtain and blind relay module and a multi room Dali control unit complete the picture. The DIN range sits alongside Rayco's flexible eight channel Rack 8 range. Like all Rayco products, they're interoperable, allowing the DIN kit to seamlessly connect with wired and wireless Rayco units, including the brand's keypads. Rayco has partnered with Future Automation, who can supply bespoke enclosures with Rayco's DIN modules mounted and pre wired off site. They can also be supplied as fully populated units with all the connections and terminals. You can pre program the modules before going to site. Night Searcher has added two super bright work lights. The Gator 1000 and the Gator 3500 are both compact, durable grip lights that are designed for professionals. As their names imply, the former delivers 1000 lumens, while the latter delivers a super bright beam of 3500 lumens. Each has three settings, flood beams, and are rechargeable via USB to give up to 12 hours of runtime. They're IP65, splash proof, and IK08 impact resistant for tough site conditions. There's a rubber coated handle for comfort and secure grip. And right now, if you use the discount code EFIX, you'll get a whopping 10% off. So get your hands on yours now. The link is in the show notes. In promo news, MK Electric has teamed up with Edmondson Electrical, Q Electrical, and Electric Centre for a brand new promotion. Up for grabs in the Game On with MK competition are no fewer than 30 MetaQuest 3S mixed reality headsets. These brilliant bits of tech are worth around 360 quid each. This is how it works. You receive a Game On with MK entry ticket for every 50 quid you spend on MK kit. It's only available at participating Edmondson Electrical, Electric Centre, and Q Electrical branches in the UK. The more you spend, the more tickets you receive, meaning more entries into to the prize draw. It all kicks off on the 10th of November and the closing date is the 5th of December 2025. The link's in the show notes and as always, terms and conditions apply. Now it's that great moment where we get to celebrate the sterling work being done by the next generation. Our Learner of the Week slot is brought to you by El Taco, German manufacturer of premium actuators, sensors and energy meters for smart homes. And our Learner this week is Millie Adams of Oakland's College in St Albans. The college's Rob Glover describes Millie as an outstanding level three learner. He says her work is impeccable and the commitment she's showing to her studies is second to none. Glover was particularly impressed with the standard of her recent mini project. This included eight circuits, fully designed and drawings with overlays provided. Many congratulations on being the eFix Learner of the Week in association with El Taco Mitley. We look forward to watching your progress into the industry.
And now to the lighter side of the electrical news. Yes, it's time for a tea break with Quickwire and its range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. Nissan has unveiled an electric car with a solar roof. The Secura is the first car to feature the extendable solar panel, which allows the car to charge on the road without plugging in. The panel can generate enough electricity in a year to power up to 1800 miles of driving. It works whether the car is moving or parked, but when stationary, it extends to get more sun coverage and improve charging speeds. When extended, the power generation potential increases to approximately 500 watts while also creating shade that helps keep the interior cool. In its retracted state the panel can generate about 300 watts in ideal conditions or 80 watts during the darkest rainiest days. I want one, I think. That's the lighter side of the news in our tea break with Quickwire and their range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. Click the link in the show notes to check them out for yourself. And now over to the John Motson of the electrical industry, it's Joe 2.0 with the latest roundup from our fantasy football league. Game Week 11 is over and out in the EFIX Fantasy League. And let's be honest, it wasn't one to remember for most managers. Arsenal conceding for the first time since September set the tone, wiping out clean sheets left, right and centre. It was a tough one across the board. If you scraped over 40 points, you've had a good week. That says it all. But don't panic, plenty more game weeks to come and still time for redemption. Let's dive in. We kick things off with the Marshall Tuflex Team of the Week, which goes to Tesco McNeil deal. Matassim H. Matassim made a smart call using his bench boost, racking up a superb 76 points, almost double the game week average. Take one look at that bench and it's like a points buffet. Great management, great timing, and for once, a bench boost that actually worked. Most of us activate it and immediately regret it. Next up, the EV Blocks Defense of the Week goes to Living Domina Loka, George Walsh. George pulled 26 points from his defense on a week where clean sheets were basically extinct. That's seriously impressive. Top effort, George. Next up, the Fusebox Flyer of the Week goes to Ginger Warriors, managed by Paul Tipton. A familiar name for regular viewers of the eFix channel, Paul climbed 64 places up the table into 163rd, powered by picking Michael Keane in defence, who delivered a monster 15 points. Great work, Paul. You've lit up the table this week. Finally, the TIS Transfer of the Week. OK, so last week's pick, Gabriel, didn't exactly go to plan. But this week, we're due a winner, and my money's on Mateta against Wolves. Wolves have looked ropey all season, and if ever there was a fixture for a forward to get himself on the score sheet, this is it. That's the highlights from Game Week 11 in the Efix Fantasy League. Huge thanks to our brand partners for backing the fun, and don't forget to enter the draw for the Nipex Tool of the Week. Link's in the description. Until next time, may your captains actually play, may your benches be stacked, and may Leeds continue to disappoint Rick. Thanks very much for that, Joe. Now, just before we get to your favourite bit of the show, where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, empowering their customers to harness power through light with their intelligent energy solutions, solar technology and advanced lighting systems, it's Leadvance. And with over 5,000 product lines from heating, lighting, ventilation to wiring accessories, if you need it, they've got it. It's electrical distributor CED Group. And the best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality products, it's Doncaster Cables. Click the links in the show notes to find out more about these great brands. If you think you know the words I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments. We'll take all the correct guesses and select one at random to be the winner of an eFix goodie bag prize. Answers submitted after about lunchtime on the Thursday after release will not be entered into the draw. Now let's reveal the winners of last week's challenge word competition. Last week's words were Chihuahua and Blubber. And the first name to be drawn out of our electronic hat was... The Chipmunk 2008. So well done to you. Make sure you click the Get Involved link in the show notes to claim your prize. This week, we've been lit by Flex7 with their lightning-fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp. Don't forget to click the links in the show notes to find out more. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with SunGrow, making every watt count, literally, since 1997. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening, and until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there, and remember, there's no such thing as a torque calibrated arm.